Hey folks, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 where we are in a fight for our very survival on the astral plane. Last time, the Emperor, a renegade Illithid, revealed his identity as the dream visitor who's been protecting us from the influence of the Absolute throughout this entire uh, adventure campaign. Uh, in spite of the shock and betrayal at that deception, we've decided to side with him in hopes that he's telling the truth. And we are fighting against four very powerful uh, Gith Zerai monks. So, let's take a look at where exactly they're positioned. We have two there, two very high up. That seems pretty, pretty reckless. Uh, we have Zephyr Gishra Verik. She has Astral Gravity and Orphic Favor. Let's see what that is. While within 18 meters of Prince Orpheus, the affected entity has resistance to psychic damage and a plus three bonus to intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. That is dangerous. That plus three bonus to saves is very reckless. Um, they're very fast. They can deflect missiles. They have evasion, extra attack, bonus on armed strikes. Yikes. Psionic empowerment. Attacks deal an extra one to six psychic damage. The scars of illithid enslavement run deep. Uh, yeah, these guys are extremely strong. Uh, so we're going to start off here with... Yeah, they're all within 18 meters. So they all have this Orphic favor. Uh, they can also deflect missiles, so ranged attacks aren't going to be great. And they have evasion, so they can reduce damage. We are going to start off with Carlock here. Since she can rage and reduce the incoming damage, except for the Psychic... Uh, I do think we'll push her forward and make her our focal point. Now, I do wonder if we can move them out of range. I know Shadowheart has that telekinesis ability, but reducing their saves may not be as important as reducing their damage. I'm not sure. Uh, let's start off with a rage here. And then we can reach this one. We can't bonus action jump up to those ones. Let's see, who... This one is the one who's going to go next. So we'd like to do something to her. What do we have that... Do we have anything that can... So this could knock her off balance. Disadvantage on strength and dexterity checks. Attack rolls against it have advantage. Uh, cleave can hit more than one enemy. Lacerate could deal some bleeding damage. We're not going to get the kill with only two attacks. So maybe we go for the Lacerate here to get some damage over time going. She is going to have her turn next. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go for this. Chief of Orpheus's Honor Guard. 136 damage. All right. Let's do it. Okay, so we got 20 damage, plus she's bleeding. Uh, let's get... Okay, she is threatened. Let's inch a little bit closer here. And let's go again. Alright, unfortunately that's all we can do. We're probably going to take some hits from her unless she goes after the intellect of ours. Let's end Carlock's turn and see what happens. Okay, she hit us once for a little bit of damage. Killed an intellect devourer. How many how many hits does she get? Mind blast. That one's stunned. That's amazing. That is extremely good for us uh, to disable one like that. Okay, Astarian's up. Uh, I'm assuming we have disadvantage to hit these guys, so we could jump up there and try to do something. No, we don't have enough movement to get there. We can only get sneak attack on this one. And she has deflect missiles... ...as a reaction. The stunned one does not, however. Um, these guys have very high defense, so let's turn off Sharpshooter. Now, this one is stunned, right? Oh no, it had its turn. It had its turn, so it is not stunned anymore. It just, it wasted its turn by being stunned. So our best bet is probably to go after this person. I don't think we can, yeah, we can't get there, so we are going to have to shoot. Um, our alternative would be to cast a spell of some sort. 
So like Tasha's would be great to disable somebody. 25% chance. Yeah, they have this plus three bonus from being within range of Orpheus. Um, Bardic Inspiration, we probably want to use. We never use it, but uh, I think it doesn't cost an action. Once per long rest, we can grant somebody Bardic Inspiration. We probably, for our bonus action then, if we're going to shoot and hope for, for this, uh, is probably... What's our chance to hit? 65%? We can use an arrow here. Although some of these would splash onto Carlock. Prevents your target from regaining hit points. Adds a d4 of necrotic. This might be good. Hmm. That's area effect. Explodes. Fiend slaying is not helpful. Darkness, not super helpful. She's already bleeding. And arcane interference. So probably we go with an arrow of Ilmater here. And hope that we hit. Okay. We'll sneak attack for 20. I guess she took zero damage from the actual thing itself. Um... Okay, we're going to need to get up there to deal with that guy. We're going to need some height, but I don't think Astarian's the one to do it. I'm not sure what I want to do with his bonus action here. We can't get close enough to make an offhand melee attack. So we could, we could hide somewhere, but they have very good visibility of the field, so that's unlikely. We could jump up here, maybe. We can jump to here. We might get pushed off, though. But that would give us a chance to interfere with this guy. He probably jumps down and slams us with, with multi-attack, though. So what's our best bet here for him? What else can he do? He can Misty Step. He can coat his weapon with a poison for next turn. Maybe that's something to do. Poison damage. We don't need Wizard's Bane oil. Oil of Bane could be good. Maybe Serpent Fang Toxin. Let's coat our weapon with Serpent Fang Toxin for next turn. Let's just make sure they're not immune to poison. Oh, you know what they might be? They have Psychic Resistance, but they also have... Charmed or Frightened. They don't have Wholeness of Body? Uh, the Leader might. No, they're not immune to poison. All right. Yeah, let's use his bonus action to coat his weapon with this Serpent Fang Toxin for the next 10 turns. And then let's give Bardic Inspiration to Tava. And Shadowheart. How does this work? Oh. We don't actually have Bardic Inspiration. Okay, he's wearing an item that like enhances it, but I don't think, I guess we don't actually have it. So let's end turn. Did some damage like that. Now are you gonna stay up there and do some kind of ranged attack? Embrace of Inferno, good Lord. Okay, those are open hand abilities, I believe. So we do need to do something about these folks. Um, all right, what do we, how do we open up with Shadowheart? A disable would be really spectacular on one of these monks. So I'm thinking about maybe using Banishment. We could Flame Strike, Banish, Dimension Door, that's an action, Polymorph. But you know what the problem is? They have such high can she cast this on two targets? 60% chance is not bad. Wait, let's... Can we do it at level 4? Do we get two targets? No, at level 5 we get two targets. 60%. 60... Uh, he, we can't see him. We want to kill this one. Alright, let's try to banish these two. Banish you. And banish you. I feel like that's a good use. 
Failed and banished. Failed and banished. All right, we took two of them off the field. That's incredible. Really nice job, Shadowheart. Excellent use of your fifth level spell slot. Uh, let's go ahead and get your battle axe weapon out here. So wait, did he come back after his turn? Is that what happened? Yeah, I think... I'm not sure what happened there. 50% chance, 60% chance. Let the, let's hit the one with the higher chance. Seven damage, we'll take it. Okay. Now Tav has got her turn. We can't get close enough, unfortunately, to attack this person. Oh wait, that's Shadowheart. I do think we want her to move forward a little bit. Nothing will stand in my way. Tava, can you get there? Damn, you can't. Um, so I think what Tava's gonna do is she is going to haste Carlock. My power walks with you. And then move forward, kind of wherever she can get to, like this. And then for her bonus action, uh, what do we want to do for bonus action? We don't want a concentrated blast because we're concentrating on haste. Numb all nearby creatures? No, that's not that's not gonna work. Um What do we have? Hunter's mark. What else do we have? Transfuse health, force tunnel. Gain advantage on attack rolls against Celestial Fiends and Undead. That doesn't work here. Divine Favor could be decent. Compelled Duel could be good. Yeah. Who's up next? This one? Carlock is raging, but she has a low AC. We have a higher AC, so Compelled Duel might be good here. Or we could use Valve Emnity to gain advantage on attacks against somebody. Maybe we do that next turn. Yeah, let's put Compelled Duel. Oh, she's only she's got a very high defense against it. What else could we do? We could Misty Step. You know what? Maybe Misty Stepping up here is a good call. She can engage this one. She can yeah, she can do she can do something with this one. All right, next turn we'll do this. I might drink a speed potion. And because we're up high, I am going to engage Reaper's Rigidity here. It's going to give us disadvantage on deck saves, but she won't be able to shove us off. Alright, that's Tava's turn. She's coming after Shadowheart. How do they get that many attacks? It's crazy. Alright, Shadowheart is hasted. All right, not Shadowheart. Carlock is hasted. Let's try and finish off the prelate here. Do we have a bonus action we want to use? Elixirs. A basic poison. Oil of diminution. D4 to... I think we're going to kill her here. But let's go ahead and use our bonus action on a basic poison. And then let's just wail on her. Uh, I think we go reckless here. Okay, one, two, there's three, and can we get the kill? Four, nice. Okay, and we leveled up. Um, Tom is going to deal with that one. We have to deal with this one. We don't have a bonus action left to jump, but let's get over here Moving. to be in the direction to jump up there if we need to. All right, good turn from Carlock. Saved against domination. All right. Who's up? Astarian? Okay, Astarian here. What are we doing? Probably a sneak attack. And I think we go melee because they have deflect missiles, right? Um, yeah, they have deflect missiles. So, is our weapon poison right now? Scorching Ray shot. Hmm. 
Uh, all right, I think we go for the offhand melee attack here. Let's try to get her. Yes. That's a miss. And five damage, okay. Not the greatest turn, but it's something. He's got hold person on, on Astarian. I'm actually kind of okay with that. All right, Shadowheart's taking a beating here. Um, let's see, what do we have? We could use telekinesis. Throw a creature object with your mind. I wonder if we can reach the one up here and throw her off. Like if I cast this, what is the range? 55% chance? I'll try it. Let's throw her right down next to Carlock. Nice, it worked. That was really cool. Uh, so we're now concentrating on telekinesis. As a bonus action, what do we want to do here? Um, we could consume a healing potion. We could burn a healing word. 5 to 8 versus... 4 to 10. Um, we're going to long rest after this, so let's do this. Let's cast this at... How many 4th level slots do we have? 3rd? Yeah, so this should give us quite a bit of healing on ourselves. 15. I'll take it. Tried to topple a Starion, then missed him. Love that. Hit him again. Okay, Th that psychic damage is doing some is doing some work. All right, um, for Tava here, do we have a particular spell we want to cast? Uh, a particular strike? Blinding Smite would blind her. So if we don't kill her because she's at full health, she'd have disadvantage on attacks. Um, we're concentrating on haste. Is this a concentration? It is not. Okay, so Blinding Smite is one option. That's Concentration. That's Concentration. Warden of Vitality. That's an action. I don't think we want to use that. Branding Smite prevents invisibility. Wrathful Smite could frighten. They have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls and they cannot move. You know what we could do? We could toss her off, right? With Thunderous Smite? The problem is then we can't jump down. So I think we I think we hit her once with a normal attack first, and then we try maybe a thunderous smite. Let's see if we get this hit. What do you mean cannot reach? Uh, let's throw a divine smite too. And now let's go after. Uh, where was it? Thunderful th thunderous smite. Yeah, pushes your target three meters away. No additional benefits casting at a higher level. Wait, what happened? Who did we who did we hit the first time? Why is she? Wait, regain hit points on self? What is happening here? Top use main hand attack, 10 bludgeoning damage, 2 acid, 3 necrotic, 2 psychic, so that's 14 plus 3 is 17, then another 13 reading, that should have done 30 damage. Mee Hawk used regain hit points on self. That should only be 4 to 11, why is she at full health? Then we cast Thunderous Smite. She succeeded on a saving throw against being thrown. But look at this. 11, 2, 1, 1, 9, 18. We had her down to like 20 hit points. She cast regain hit points on self, and she's back to full. I don't understand that. Is that a bug? How is she back to full? All right, something weird is happening there. I'm not sure what. Uh, let's do some damage to this thing. 
Nice crit from the spiritual weapon. Love it. Okay. I guess... I guess we just go here with, uh... With Carlock. One. Two. Uh, we'll go three here to kill. And then four. And five. Okay, she's down to one hit point. I must Okay, he did some sort of lightning bolt that killed her and did some damage up here. She's like, she's fully regaining all of her hit points. I don't, how do I, every time we hit her, she fully regains all of her hit points. How is she doing that? Um, let's try this. 20. Okay, and then she regains all her hit points. I don't understand that at all. How are we supposed to fight this? Do we have to attack Orpheus? Um, let's bonus action drink a healing potion and end turn. What does Shadowheart do? We need to disable her... I don't know if this is a reaction or what this is. Uh, Ember Gishra Mihaik. Orphic Favor. Advance on our movement, deflect missiles, evasion, extra attack. Psionic Empowerment, Slow Fall. Stillness of Mind. I don't see any feature on here that would let her infinitely regenerate her hit points. This guy's dead, but he's still in the turn order. I'm, I'm, I'm very confused right now. Alright, let's see if this guy reacts. I'm gonna do a quick save here because I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna attack Orpheus and see if the, if my, if the Emperor objects to that. Invalid target. Okay. Well, we need something to stop this chick from, like, infinitely regenerating her, her hit points. Fear could be decent. Nine times a day, regain one to eight plus three hit points out of combat. Is she not in combat with us? She's not in the turn order. This is some sort of a bug. I'm not sure what's going on here. For now, let's just, maybe maybe at the start of the next turn, she'll come in. Um, let's go ahead and use telekinesis on her since we're concentrating on it. Let's throw her down here. Okay, we got her down there. Oh, now she's in the initiative order. That was very strange. Some sort of odd bug there, I think. Um, all right, let's end turn. Tava can jump down here no problem because of astral gravity. Let's smack the shit out of this lady. And she's dead. Okay, that was bizarre. Thank you. That was too close. Don't look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the Absolute. Of all the things to be indebted to, a bloody mind flayer. Hmm. Okay, uh... 
You were in the prism all this time. It was you in the prism all this time. Why did you deceive me? It was necessary. Rare are those that would openly consider a partnership with a Mind Flayer. Even those who are on a path of becoming one. It's like I said before. I'm just like you. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate. Though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of Mind Flayers who caught me. Changed me into what I am now. I serve the Elder Brain. The one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me while I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stelmain. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield, the largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy. For a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Wow. Okay. An interesting story. It does seem... All right. So trusting this guy seems a little bit risky. If the story he told is true, and it seems he's communicating directly into our mind, showing us images, but who knows what powers, mental powers, mind flayers are truly capable of. But if, if what he's told us is true, he doesn't seem to be bent on domination. He doesn't seem to care about the power on offer if he could control the Elder Brain. It seems he simply wants to live a normal life as an individual. He had this order and the mercantile operations and everything. He had friends. He had a, he had a good life in Baldur City, admittedly feeding on the brains of criminals, which is, you know, morally questionable, a bit of a gray area. Uh, some criminals deserve to die, but maybe not all of them. But to stop the Chosen and their scheme and potentially get these Mind Flayers out, or these Parasites out of our heads, we don't really have a great choice other than to cooperate with him for now. Let's see what Tava's options are here. Hmm. Ask about Lord Gortash. Ask about eating the criminals' brains. I think the next most interesting question there is that Githyanki in the sphere, who is it? Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' mother to bring about the fall of the Elithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, a usurper took her place. Blackith declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Blackith wanted his power. He refused. And so she sealed him within this prison. His honor guard, ever loyal, followed him in. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. 
This is troubling for us. Uh, if Orpheus is a prisoner held against his will, guilty of no crime, it's pretty difficult for us to conscience keeping him that way. Uh, is it possible, I mean, given the stakes involved in the, in the involvement of the Elder Brain and the Illithid, isn't it possible he would help us of his own free will if we freed him? Uh, okay. So then, yeah, some interesting questions. I would love to ask all three of these. Um, presumably, Vlacketh wanted us to kill the Emperor to eliminate the protections to stop the fight so that she could take control of Orpheus. She probably wants him alive. How did you, yeah, how did you get here? You were enslaved by the, uh, the Elder Brain a second time. Were you imprisoned here too? No. Gothash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gothash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside, and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus, and find allies in the outer world. You. Hmm. Was it you or Orpheus? I guess we can ask this. Was it you or Orpheus that Vlacketh wanted us to kill when she ordered us inside the prism? Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Ah, uh, I would have thought she wanted the power for herself. Him, in defiance of their teachings. Vlacketh was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. Hmm. I'd very much like to free him and gain his, uh, gain, gain, gain his friendship. What happens if, if we free him? That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. Hmm. How do we respond to that? I mean, his outer form obviously is that of an illithid, and he's admitted to eating the brains of criminals. But obviously, as an independent thinker, he's nothing like the other Illithid. I'm, I'm, quite un, I'm quite upset that we can't somehow persuade Orpheus to join us. That his hatred makes him that unseeing. I don't like... I don't like imprisoning him like this and using him. It doesn't feel right. But with the stakes involved, we may not have a choice. Uh, the more I talk to you, the less you seem like a Mind Flayer. I appreciate that. But this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic, and that humanoid shape you've come to know. 
As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. Hmm. I'm trying to avoid becoming a Mind Flayer. I thought you agreed to protect me. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent Alithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. What would that entail? You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. Hmm. If you can evolve me, why can't you stop Ceramorphosis altogether? The answer is twofold. One, I can. But it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an Alithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? Yikes. Um. So, I gather if we evolve, we get more power. This might be how we unlock that outer ring of Illithid powers. But I'm... I'm... I don't want to go full squid face. I mean, maybe... <laughs> I, maybe that's vanity or fear or just revulsion. I, I'm not sure how to describe it, but... I'm I'm nervous about the physical changes, and I'm worried about how Shadowheart's going to react to this. Not to mention the rest of my, my allies. But we are in a fight for our lives. And I'm... She's so far gone... None of the others have been allowed to have any Illithid power. She's the only one who's made the choice. I guess if you look at it as making a sacrifice for the greater good, gaining more power to be able to stop the Chosen, I think she... I think she's already walked this path far enough. I don't think she'll... If, if the option is presented, I think she would avoid going full Mind Flayer. I think that is, too, is a step too far. But a partial evolution for more power, I think we... I think as, as, as intimidating as that idea is, we'll roll the dice and see what it does to us and hope that our friends and companions can still care about us, even if the physical changes are revolting. Do it. I'll evolve. Well, certainly brave of you. I'll say that much. You continue to surprise me. Your mind is truly something special. Now... Hold out your hand. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. Hmm. A tadpole. Nurtured by the psionic energy of the astral plane, cocooned here for millennia, it has become extraordinary. Let's probe at the tadpole's intentions. Nice. The tadpole screams for growth with painful intensity. It has been starved. Of life, of purpose. It welcomes your probing like a void waiting to be filled. If you let it, it will evolve you. Just as the Emperor said. Eat that shit! What are you? A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens. It's yearning almost unbearable. I suppose if it works. But if you had opened your mind to it rather than consuming it, 
Your allies could have taken advantage of its power as well. The tadpole's essence oh, well, through you. Too bad. We've been eating all the other ones. Flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the brain, and bring it under our control. All right, there we go. Uh, first of all, uh, incredible fight. Really cool uh, conclusion of the battle. More, more information revealed to us. Everybody's leveled up to level 10, which is fantastic. And we've become a half Illithid. You've embraced Ceramorphosis and become half Illithid. You can now unlock even more powerful psionics. Okay, wow. Uh, so, it looks like this has changed our appearance as well. Although I can't quite get the details. We're gonna need to look in a mirror at some point. Um, but we have seven Illithid powers we can buy here. And the outer ring is unlocked. So, let's see what these are. Uh, fly, we have for free it looks like. We got this. Fly to a target position. Okay, so we have flight. Black hole. Create a point of intense gravity that pulls in all nearby enemies and possibly slows them. Five more black holes can be summoned after this spell's initial casting. Afterwards, you must short rest before casting it again. That sounds amazing as a, deep, as a control spell. Psionic dominance, a passive feature. When an enemy within 18 meters targets you with a spell of a level that is lower than or equal to your proficiency bonus, you can use your reaction to nullify the spell. That is, uh, that is like counter spell. We are picking that up immediately. We need that. They have to be within range of us, and they have to target us. But our proficiency bonus is five, so I think we can stop level four or lower, which includes fireball. All right, uh, illithid expertise. You've deepened your sense of self, gaining expertise in persuasion, deception, and intimidation checks. We're already pretty strong at those. But it couldn't hurt. Uh, we got seven tadpoles here. Fracture Psyche. Invade a target's mind and disrupt its defenses. The target's armor class is reduced by one. If the target dies while its Psyche is fractured, you can cast Shatter Psyche on another target. Shatter Psyche lowers the armor class by two, and you can chain them. That seems pretty strong, especially as a bonus action. So reduce by one and then, and then push it forward. Let's, let's pick that up. Uh, displacer Beast Shape. Wow. Transform into a Displacer Beast that can displace itself and enemies and has 85 hit points. Uh, displace being 2d8 damage, 2d8 psychic damage. Teleports yourself and a target to a nearby location, shredding the target's mind and leaving behind an illusory copy of yourself. That sounds amazing. You take on the attributes of a Displacer Beast, but maintain your Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma scores. When your Displacer Beast form drops to zero hit points, you revert to your original form once per long rest. So, like, 85 free hit points? That seems amazing. Absorb Intellect. Gobble up a foe's Intellect, lowering their Intelligence by one per turn and healing your wounds for five turns. One to eight healing. Lower an enemy's Intelligence by one, which I guess can hurt their Intelligence saving throws and their spellcasting. And heal yourself 1d8 for 5 turns. That seems pretty good. Free cast. Toggleable passive feature. You've discovered a marvelous adaptability within yourself. Spell slots, charges, and similar resource costs for your next action or spell are removed. Refreshes after a long rest. Wow. So once per long rest, we can get a free cast. That seems good. And then we have Mind Sanctuary. Sculpt a magical nexus that allows those within to take actions and bonus actions interchangeably. That one I'm not as sure about. I don't quite see how to use that. I'm, I'm sure there's some very good things that, that can happen there. And then Mind Blast. 48 plus 3 psychic damage. Spew forth a conical wave of psychic energy and possibly stun targets within. Okay, area effect. Cone. With possible stun, that's amazing. Let's get that. 
I mean, we've got four left, so what do we want to do here? We've got Black Hole, Illithid Expertise, Displacer Beast Shape, Absorb Intellect, Free Cast, Mind Sanctuary. So I'm thinking probably Black Hole, Displacer Beast, Absorb Intellect, and Free Cast. And then we'll have two left that we haven't picked up yet. All right, let's do it. Okay, so our total number of Illithid powers now is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So, Call the Week is going to be incredible. Get anybody below 24 hit points and they just die. That's like taking 24 hit points off of the, the health of anybody we... Oh my god, this is incredible. Alright, uh, wow. So... Astral Globe of Domination. I mean, there's still a lot left we have to do here, and then we have to head back, long rest, and get on the road to Baldur's Gate, but what an incredible episode. Uh, Tava here has become a partial Illithid. Looks like mostly the, the dark veins on her face. Hopefully... Hopefully Shadow Bay doesn't mind too much. Uh, but we're going to have to find out about all the ramifications of today's episode in the next one, because I need to take a break here. So, uh, we'll be back next time with more Baldur's Gate 3. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. What a cool fight. What a cool encounter and scenario. And some amazing power for Tava. Too bad I ate that tadpole instead of communing with it. I don't know what the benefit would have been for my allies, but I made my choice and I got to stick with it. So we'll see you next time. Take care.